please welcome to the stage, Seth Herzog! Kevin Allison, everybody, right? He looks fantastic. He looks fantastic. How great was um, 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 Janine? Hilarious. She should never have quit stand-up. No. Um, I, uh, I'm gonna tell two stories. Now, I, um, I got involved with the state and knowing them because uh, Mike Showalter and I uh, have been friends since we were six. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We grew up uh, in central Jersey together. In, yeah, in Princeton. That's where we're from. Uh, in fact, this is one of Mike's old shirts from high school that uh, he gave me and it still fits. And I found that amazing that it fits as much as you can stress the definition of fit. It's kind of a half shirt for me now. It's a bit of a, you know, like a Britney vibe, but I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, so Mike and I have been friends since we were young and we really bonded over comedy when we were kids. We loved, uh, when we first met, we really loved Saturday Night Live and we loved Steve Martin and we loved Animal House. We were obsessed with Animal House. And um, we, we had our own little sketch show, I think in fourth grade, we used to do a recess. And all I remember about it was one of the sketches was called Sunday Morning Hangover, which was sort of a spoof of Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, I didn't know what a hangover was. I was eight. Like someone had to explain to me what that was like, years later. But the joke of the bit was that it was all the characters from Saturday Night Fever, Sunday morning, still in the club, pretending they're having fun. And they're all like, yeah, this is the time of our lives. We're doing it. This is the best. Keep it up. More Coke. Or whatever it was. We were eight and still figuring out what the hell we were talking about. Um, and then, so we, we did a lot of that stuff and we were just always doing bits together and, and sort of like writing things. And then when we got to high school, all of a sudden amongst our friends, it was stepped less, it stopped being about comedy and more about just beer. Just getting booze and how are we going to get drunk? Very quickly. And we started, you know, going into your parents' liquor cabinet and my parents always had a bunch of bottles that they were given as gifts that no one cared about. So we would wander around with like blackberry brandy and like, why are we doing shots of this? It's the only thing we could get into. We were like, yeah, we got a bottle of apricot liqueur, you know. <laughs> that was a big deal because getting booze in our little town, even though it's a college town, there was like two stores and everyone, the guys knew everyone. You know, you literally needed three IDs and your grandmother with you to buy anything. Um, so it was really hard. So we would try to get runners. Like there's nothing sadder than a bunch of 15 year olds standing outside of a liquor store asking like 22 year olds to buy them beer. Um, but then we found out about this one store that was in the not so nice neighborhood. In Princeton, there's one neighborhood that's not so nice that they said, there's a guy there who can get you beer. Just go there. And we went and sure enough, there's a dude with a pad and a pen waiting for high school kids to show up. And that's his little side business. And he, he would take orders. And then he'd give the money to the older gents who were hanging out on the corner and they would go get your brew and sometimes they wouldn't. <laughs> it was a real 50-50 shot. You'd give them however much money you had and I didn't know, none of us knew how much beer cost because we never could get really in the door. So we don't know if a case was like $5 or $50. We had no idea. We just went with whatever price they told us. So we'd give them all this money, and they were like, yeah, that's about enough for a case. And I was like, $600, that's all we have. <laughs> and we'd give them the $600, and then we'd sit there and wait, like, are we gonna get it, are we not? Sometimes we did, sometimes we'd stand out there for an hour, and no one was coming back. We're like, I guess this is now our night, not getting anything. So, um, and one time, and when we got older, we got cars, uh, uh, and, and a little boulder li living uh, next to the university, we would steal beer from the students. And we would steal kegs occasionally, which was the best thing if you could get away with it. It was the best, and we loved it. But we couldn't get taps. Like, getting taps was really hard. There were so, so many hurdles. It was like, like constant, oh my God, it was like Lord of the Rings, like so many missions. And so we, one time we had this keg and there's like seven teenagers just standing around it would have a tap and someone took out an ax, started putting an ax to it, they're like, no, that's only gonna ruin it, but half of us were like, keep going! 
Like, this is the only way we're gonna get the precious, precious juice. And uh, one time, so one time we had that beer, that keg and no tap, and, and we like sent people out. It was like 11 o'clock on like, in a suburban night. We're like, go find a tap, go forth. You'll be surprised how many people came back with stolen taps. If you look hard enough, you can find them around towns. It's amazing, one person stole it from a wedding. They went to a wedding and they stole a tap of a keg and brought it back. It's like, we had resourceful friends. I was very impressed with our friends. So one of my favorite stories of this elk was, it was the uh, fall of our sophomore year of high school. And there was a big party coming up and Mike and our friend Joel were like, we need beer for sure for this party. So we decided, you know what we should do? Let's go to the city. That was the bold move. We never thought about that before. We were thought, this, this is, they don't really card people, it's the city. They don't know if anyone's, whatever, they give beer to 12 year olds, this is it. <laughs> so we're like, okay. And we, we didn't get on the train, because we had to get, a, to get on the train, we would need a ride from our parents to the train station, but this was a secret mission. So we took the bus. We could walk to the bus. So we got on the bus and we tried to look old. <laughs> Though I, I wore a vest and like a shirt with no collar. Like I was going to Hillman College, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was a different world for me. And, and our other friend Joel, no joke, put on a poncho and like a cowboy hat. <laughs> he literally looked like Clint Eastwood and like Fistful of Dollars. Yet braces, yet had braces. That's his overcompensation for the braces was the poncho and the hat. We're like, all right, this is our look. A white kid from a different world than Clint Eastwood. And Mike, I don't know, Mike was wearing like a sweatsuit, like full head to toe sweatsuit. Like he was trying to pose like a, like a, like a, like a hip hopper. And um, like we were going to the like an Halloween costume party. So we, we go to the city and we're all nervous. We don't know where to go, where should we go, da da da. But the difference in New Jersey, in New York, in New York you can buy beer in delis, which you can't in, in Jersey, that doesn't exist. So like, let's just go to a deli and casually buy, buy beer. So I have the balls, like I'll go in first, I'll go in first. So I remember we're on like University and like 10th Street or something, and I walked into a deli and I got a six out of the fridge and I put it on the counter and I started explaining myself to the woman at the counter. I was like, yeah, I'm an NYU student. <laughs> having a party tonight, figuring to get a little beer. But I love that I said I'm having a party tonight. Like she cared if I'm having a, who am I, what I'm doing? But I only had six beers. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm having a party, but I get some beers. I got six, that's enough, right, for a party. <laughs> and then she starts laughing. She's ringing it up. The woman at the counter is ringing it up, but she's laughing. And, but all I cared about is that she's ringing it up. And I'm like, it hits me. I'm like, you know what? I should go get some more beer. I was like, you know what? I think there's gonna be more people at this party than I thought. <laughs> and I went and got just another six. That was it. I didn't, I was too ballsy to get like a case. So I just got 12 beers. I was like, that should be it. So I walk out with 12 beers and Mike and Joel are like, oh my God, oh my God, you did it. What happened? I was like, I just went in there, said I was having a party and I bought some beer. She was cool. Didn't ask me a thing, no ID. Must've been the best. So Mike, so Showalter goes in, he buys beer, comes out with the uh, bags of beer. Joel goes in, Joel buys beer. So now we have all this beer and now we're like, now what do we do? We're in the city with like a case and a half of beer. So we're like, but we're scared. Cause we're like, the cops are gonna see us. We can't, we get caught. There's a lot of cops around. So like, okay, here's what we do. Let's go to like a store, like a regular like clothing store with like, a, like, like the brand name of the store on the bag. And we'll get a bunch of bags with store brands on them and we'll put the beer in there. So it looks like we bought clothes. This is how paranoid we were that we're gonna get caught. So we go around to all these West Village stores and didn't even ask, we didn't buy, we were too cheap to buy clothes. We said, can we borrow a bag? Is there a bag we can have? And we got all these giant bags. It was freezing, but we took our coats off and put them on top of the beer because we were worried people would see in and see that we were too young to have all this beer. So ner like neurotic. And then so we go back to Port Authority, freezing with these big bags of beer with coats on them. And then we're like gonna take the bus back to Jersey and we're figuring out like, wait, 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 wait. We're now taking illegal beer across state lines. <laughs> is, this like a, is this like a bigger felony? If we get caught, is this like double felony? Like, oh, should we rethink this? Should we rethink this? Like such nerds, like so overthinking everything. But we did it. We're like, fuck it, let's just do it. We came all this way. 
So we put the beer in the overhead and we're like so psyched for going back to Jersey with this beer. We get off the bus. We walk from the bus stop to Showalter's house. And now the big concern, it's always the big concern, once you get the beer, next turtle, where do you store it? You can't just store it in your fridge at home because your parents be like, why are there two cases of beer in our fridge? And why is all the noodles out to spoil? Like, you know, and you'd be like, oh, I'm having a party with my 15 year old friends. Like you can't say that. So this was always the big hurdle. So we hit it in the leaf piles behind Mike's backyard. That was our original idea. He had piles of leaves. We hit him in the piles of leaves. And we, we did that, we were happy with that idea for like an hour. Then Joel and I are about to leave and Mike goes, freaks out, he's like, no, we gotta get them out of the leaf piles. My dad's gonna deal with the leaves tomorrow. He's gonna find the beer, we gotta get them out. This is a big deal, we can't, you, can't, you can't leave them there. So we're like, okay, fine, fine, fine. So Joel and I take all the beer, we put them in a green trash bag and we're gonna walk him back to Joel's house and hide him in his basement. That was the final plan. So we're walking, it's like a half mile, it's not a far walk from Showalter's house to our friend Joel's place. And it's the middle of the night after we had bought the beer. It's maybe like midnight, one o'clock, and there's no one on the street. And we're walking, I have the big trash bag of beer, and then all of a sudden I feel a car creeping next to us. I'm like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Just be, just be like a pedophile, please be a pedophile. <laughs> Just don't be a cop, just a pedophile, just not a cop. So the car creeps up and all of a sudden spotlight hits us. I'm like, fuck, it's a fucking cop. So the cop gets out. He's like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, nothing, just walking, walking home. What do you got in the bag? I guess he thought we were robbing houses because I had such a big bag. And he got, I go, cans, not a lie. Not officially a lie. I did say cans. And then he goes, what kind of cans? And I open the bag up, he goes, those kind of cans. How old are you? And I was 15, I said 17, which is a lie, but still not old enough to have beer. Why would I lie, but not lie old enough to have it? Like, it was just like a weird thing. It was like, I figured if I was older, he'd be like, nah, you're old enough to have that, but not legally old enough. I don't know what, I, I was just, there was 700 things went through my head and I landed on that lie. That was what I ended with. And then he looked at my friend, and my friend Joel said the truth, he's like 15, and he's like, what are you hanging out with that kid for? Uh, if you're 17. So the, kid, so the cop's like, what am I gonna do with you guys? Where'd you get that beer? I said, we got in New York, my uncle bought it for us. I don't know why I even made up that lie, but I did. <laughs> and then he's like, get in, the, get in the car. And I was like, fuck, get in the car? I'm not getting in a cop car at 1 a.m.? This guy might be a pedophile. So, <laughs> I don't know. So he puts our beer, puts it in the trunk, and I'm like, I don't like the sound of that. Closes the trunk, puts us in the car, and says, where are you guys coming from? I go, our friend Mike's house. Where is it? Show me. So he drives back to Shel Walter's house. We're sitting in the driveway. Mike's parents are home at this point. And he's like, are his parents home? I was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I'm like, tough guy, trying to be tough guy. I don't know, dude, you tell me. Yeah. And the cops like starts giving us a lecture of like, I should go there and I should like ring the bell and tell the parents what you guys been up to, what you have. Like this is illegal for you guys to have this, you should be doing this, this would be a major crime, da da da. And he's talking and talking and talking at us, but he's not leaving the car and he's not ringing the bell. I'm like, this guy's not gonna do shit. Oh, I guess it's gonna scare us. Now I'm mad. Cause now I'm mad, I'm like, oh, he's just gonna fucking scare us and drop us off somewhere. So the Joel's still trying to be nice. And then he finally doesn't do anything. He pulls out of uh, Mike's house and he's like, where are you guys going? I was like, we're going back to Joel's house. Where is it? So he's driving us back to Joel's house and now he starts being nice. He goes, hey, you guys play any, any instruments? Joel's like, I play bass. I'm like, stop being nice to him. <laughs> so he drives us back and then he, um, was, oh, he says like, uh, I was like, hey, you have our beer. Can you give us like a six of it? At least some of it. I've been trying to bargain with the dude. I'm like, come on, you know, we're nice kids. We, got, we took it all the way from, from, from New York. Like, I was like, come on, you gotta be something. He goes, he thinks about it. He goes, mm, wouldn't be right. And he drives away with all our beer in his trunk. I was like, stealing our beer was more right than giving it to us. I'm so mad. Uh, I was furious, I was so furious. It was all that work for nothing. And now the irony is we're all sober. But uh, it's true. Everyone's like, no one wants to even go, go to, near it. Um, the other story I want to tell was 
Uh, I was very close with the state, with all the guys from, like, I went to, like, you know, the first show at NYU when Mike was in there, and then I saw Molt, and then all the tapings, and, um, and through the 90s, I lived in New York and hung out with them a lot, and I remember one of my favorite stories was we were at another friend's birthday, and at, like, three in the morning, Ken Marino and another friend of his named Frank decided they were going to drive to, uh, um, um, Nolens, drive to New Orleans <laughs> at 3 a.m., and him and Frank, Ken and Frank, were trying to get women to come with them on this road trip they decided to do at the party in the middle of the, of, of the night. They're like, we're driving to New Orleans. Anybody want to go? Woo! And I was the only one to put his hand up. <laughs> no, I was like, no one else wanted to go. And they're like, all right, Seth, I guess you're coming with us to New Orleans. <laughs> no women? No, none, none? So I run back to my apartment. I pack a little bag. They come and pick, pick me up, and me, Ken Marino, and his friend Frank, spend a whole day and a half driving to New Orleans. But we go, we went to Memphis first, and I have a lot of friends there, and I said, we should go to Memphis first and have fun there, and then we'll go, we'll go down to New Orleans. So we spend a day and a half, we drive to Memphis. Now, Ken, Ken had decided when we got to Memphis that every bar I took him to, he was gonna steal something. <laughs> and some big things. So I took him to a bar that I know well, and, he st and they have giant framed like movie posters there, and he stole and walked out with one of these giant framed <laughs> movie posters, which was kind of uncool. We ended up having to give that back, but uh, <laughs> then, we, then we went to a bunch of other bars, and he stole giant mugs, and he left with something at every single bar. The last bar we went to, because we spent the two or three days there, the last bar we went to was this thing called the Red Lion, but the locals referred to it as the Redneck because the guys who ran it were uh, not nice. And we are, uh, and and so we're. I'm playing pool, and there's not. There's only Ken, and me, my friend George, who we we're meeting, Frank, and a couple of people. There's not many people in this in this bar. It's late, late night. Ken had stolen one of the lamps, and like a green little banker's lamp, and had it under his sweater. I did not know this. He didn't tell me. He's holding his sweater. And he's like. We're gonna go, right? We're gonna, we're gonna leave now? We're gonna leave, we're ready to go? And I was like, no, my pool game's up. I'm getting ready to pool. He goes, all right, fine. <laughs> so I'm playing pool, and I see as I'm playing pool, the owner of the red neck, the red lion, is looking at the tables, and he sees one of the lamps gone. And he goes outside, and our friend Frank is, has the car ready, ready to go. And he's like asking, what are, you, what are you doing here in the middle of the night? He's like, I'm picking up my friends. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Starts giving him like the third degree. And then he comes back in, he closes the door and locks it. <laughs> yeah. He goes, no one's leaving till I get my lamp back. And all of a sudden, I don't know what's going on. And all the other guys are grabbing pool sticks. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then I look at Ken and he's sitting there holding his sweater. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> And I'm like, what the fuck? It's long silence. And this one girl who works behind the bar goes, I took your lamp. The guy's like, you did? Like, very serious. She goes, no, I'm kidding. And it's the longest, most great, <laughs> tense filled silence I've ever heard in my life. It goes on for feel, seeming like ever. And then Ken finally goes, you know what's funny? I'll tell you what's funny. I had your lamp the whole time. It was me. It was me the entire time. Here it is. He gives the lamp back and then there was a moment where I thought for sure they were gonna keep the door locked and just kick our asses. I really did. I was like grabbing my pool cue. I was like, I don't know, I've seen Star Wars, something's going on. I'm gonna try and get this ready to rock this. And then he goes, you know what? The owner's like, I think he sized up the fight. He sized up, there was three of us and like three of them and they were like, I don't know if this is worth it. He's like, you know what? Maybe you guys just get the fuck out of here. And he opened the door. Then Ken goes, all right, maybe we should. And then I, I held my cue all the way to the door. So I was like, I don't want to get hit on the side of the head and not know it. And then I put down the cue and I was like, thank you so much, it was really fun. <laughs> all right, you guys were great, thanks so much. Ke Kevin.